Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about juniors, code tests, and then sucking when you actually have to work. Let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, have you ever hired someone who did amazingly in the code interview or the code test and then turned out to be, a re be really bad at actual software development? And the short answer is yes, pretty much every single one of the juniors, well, not every single one, but pretty much everybody has this problem, usually. Let me explain. So guys, this is one of the things that you probably heard if you've watched on my other ramblings about this, this sort of stuff. This is something that you should have heard me say before. If you think that the important part about learning how to be a software developer is to get good at algorithms and to be able to pass the code in an interview. If you think that's the best, the best way for you to spend your time, you are in for a rough awakening. That's just the first step. I have met many, many, many junior developers who have much fancier degrees than I have and they have taken all kinds of courses. They are computer whiz kids with like a heavy, heavy, heavy emphasis on both computer science and mathematics and so forth. And they are absolute geniuses. As long as they get to work on a single function that they need to optimize. The second you ask them to implement a story, they are completely lost. They don't know the first thing about version control. They don't know the first thing about how to deal with stakeholders. They don't know the first thing about how to work with a network or an application or architecture. They have no fucking clue about any of it, none of it. And most of them are very humble. They realize very quickly, I don't think like, I've only ever actually and this was actually a question on an old video where someone said that they had a junior who was kind of pompous, thought that they knew everything. The, that's the only person, I've, I've never met a junior that behaved in this way because it usually is a very rough awakening for the for few people that I've met who sort of had an attitude, like they kind of thought that, yeah, no, I feel kind of confident. They usually, that just kind of dies just a few weeks into actual work because the difference between writing a code test, which is a very controlled, specific, clean problem. Usually, it's usually a computer science problem or a toy application. You're going to build some simple program that goes to a network and gets something or does display some data. These are toys, guys. The reason why you have them is just so that we can make sure that you're not lying, that you can actually, like, th that's what the code test is there to test. It's not there to verify if you're a amazing software developer. It's there to verify that you actually know how to write software. That's what it's there to do, in essence. That is not something that is going to be, in, it's not going to be possible to gauge if someone is actually really good or really bad. You can get a gut feeling from people. And uh, honestly, that's what most managers who hire for program, hire programmers are going by. This is, what, this is why I've told you many times before that the most important thing for you is not to prove that you can write perfect functions with perfect syntax and the logic is absolutely beautiful and there's comments and shit like that. It's about showing that, hey, you know what, I could solve this problem and then leave that person who is doing the hiring with a good gut feeling that you seem to be a sociable person that knows what you're doing. These are, are the things that are going to get you hired. But the code test in of itself will not tell the manager, oh, this is definitely going to be a good hire. They're going to go with their gut feeling. So if we're going with gut feeling, of course, we as humans have to accept that unfortunately everybody has the wrong assumptions sometimes, except for me, of course, and you probably. But sometimes some people who are less experienced and less sexy than we are, are going to make that mistake and they're going to push in someone into the company who is unfortunately not up to the task. And usually this comes in the format of that they are not really, they don't know all the tools of the stack and they don't really know how to deal with this much code. I don't think I've ever, it's, that's the most common thing I hear from, from junior developers. They are overwhelmed by how much code there is. And that's the thing guys, 
if you are working on your own project, your own prod application at home or some hobby project like that, you have no idea how much more code you're gonna have to deal with. We're talking about that you alone might produce, let's say for the sake of argument, it's a semi-serious project. So let's call it a few thousand lines. That's, that's a, even that is, I think, kind of high. But let's say a 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 lines of code by yourself. Now, the average company has at least 30,000 lines of code. Like it, we're talking about several magnitude, the larger corporations have millions of lines of code in, in, over the entire system. We're talking about tons and tons and tons of logic and software and different systems that needs to interact with each other. And then you have all these different requirements where, oh, uh, can you change this line of code? I don't really know because I don't understand how the whole feature works. And without doing that, I might actually cause a regression bug. And all of these uncertainties in this new environment that it overwhelms people. It overwhelmed me. It is very likely going to overwhelm you if you're just going to start out. And this is natural. You feel like you're in like a, I don't know, you're drowning in all of these different concepts and all of these tools and all of this stuff, right? And that is usually something that ends up with junior developers or people who go and come into a company like they become fairly unproductive. They're very uncertain about everything. I mean, this and this is not just for juniors, guys. I mean, I have this problem as well at my current job where I felt like I was so out of my depth for the first, like I wasn't, a, I, I wasn't really accustomed to the way of working in that company. So I felt that it was really, really hard to get productive in a feasible amount of time. I'm still a little bit ashamed of that it took me so long to be to get back into the groove of things. Like at my last comp the company before, I was kind of just getting things done. But at the new company, because it wasn't really, I wasn't accustomed to working this way. It took longer. And for a junior, for sure that this, this happens, it happens as well. It happens to quite a lot of people. And it's not unnatural for you to have, to need a bit of a startup period. Like, some people do have the ability and like hopefully you're not this sort of person because these are the sort of people that very like they they find it usually hard to stay in the business where they are really good at academics like they are super talented when it comes to reading a, a reading up on a problem and then solving it in accordance to the instructions that they have been given but that is not how software development works Software development means that you need to know about all the different ways you can solve a problem and then get like a lump of kind of weird specifications or things that you kind of is kind of the thing that you're looking for and then be creative enough to understand that oh this is what that means and then I can probably solve it in this way you need to be able to dilute the a higher meaning a higher a, a bigger truth if you will from all the knowledge that you acquire and basically use that information to create new solutions and work around problems and be it's much more dynamic it's not like a history or or things of this nature where you just memorize it and then you can apply it you need to actually reflect more and you need to be able to solve problem be a problem solver rather than just someone who memorizes how to how someone else has solved a certain problem so what i want you to take away from this is that it's very common, actually, that you might get a sensation that someone is really, really good in a coding interview because you base it on a very a small fraction in a very controlled environment. Uh, there's so little data. You might. It's very hard to tell if someone is going to be that good in when they actually go and do the real work. That's why the so soft skills and the social skills matter quite a lot to quite a lot of managers because they know that, oh, if I hire someone who's really, really good with coding in the interview, but they have really, really poor social skills, that might be a problem when they, if they aren't as good when we actually get them to do the real work. But if you have a person who's kind of social and kind of open for change and like really enthusiastic, well, even if they're not the best coder, like they can get the job done, then at least we can feel comfortable in that, hey, we can actually mold, mold this person into what we need them to be. We can train them, we can give them a senior, we can do things with, with that situation. And it's, as I said, it's actually very common that at least when you get into the inside of a, your first job or something like that, that, or a new job at least, that you 
you have a bit of a ramping up period. Even if you're an experienced developer, you might not be accustomed to working with this way in this way and so forth. So you might not actually be as good as, it's like being rusty or it's like driving somebody else's car. You know exactly how you should drive your own car, but it's a little bit clunky in the beginning to drive somebody else's car. But then you get into the group of things. And some people, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, are pure academics. They, and what I mean by that is basically that they're very, very good at memorizing information and learning things and then being able to reference these things, but they lack that other ability to take all those learnings and actually apply it in real life. And that is what software development is all about. And these people, they usually don't survive all that long, I'm sorry to say, in a company. But they do get through the process as well because a code interview is a very controlled environment usually. Have a great day.